All righty, on voicemail. Voicemail is the confusing three column handout. Again, this is designed to be on one piece of paper, double-sided, and then folded into thirds. We're going to start on the page far right that says Voicemail User's Guide, log in first time only. Your voicemail is up and running right now. If people can get to your voicemail box, they can leave you a message. Uh, you cannot listen to those messages until you've done that first column there, initialized your mailbox. You could do this today or this weekend wanted to from home. Just be aware that the system is not in production right now. They're going to be taking the system up and down for testing. Worst case scenario, you'll have to redo it on Monday. Um, so you might just you know, save yourself some time and just do it on Monday. If you come in Monday, you're going to initialize your mailbox. You'll hit the voicemail key. If, by chance, you get a busy signal, don't freak out. That's because everybody else who just moved in is doing the exact same thing. Get a cup of coffee, come back, try again. That is probably going to be the only time you would ever get a busy signal on this because everyone's hitting it at the same time. Um, once you hit the button, voicemail Sally will answer. She's going to ask you for your extension. You'll put in your five digit extension followed by the pound sign. The pound sign in the system is just like the enter key on our keyboards. If it seems like it's waiting for you to do something, you're not quite sure what to do, hit pound a couple more times. Then she's going to ask you for your password. Your first time password, and this may or may not be written on your handout, depends on what version you have, is 2580. 2580. Which, if you look at your phone, is straight down the middle. That's why we use those digits. So you'll put in 2580 and then pound. If you can remember this, you do not need the piece of paper in front of you. I'm going to walk you through the rest. First thing you need to do is record your name. You'll press one, there's a beep, and you say your name. This is just your name, John Smith, not, hi, this is John Smith, I'm away from my desk, please leave me a message. That's a greeting, and then you do that, you set that up someplace else. You hit one, there's a beep, you say your name, you hit one to stop the recording. She'll play it back. If you like it, you'll press pound to approve it. If you're giggling too much and want to do it again, hit one. As soon as you hit pound, she's going to play it to you, back to you one more time. Then you need to set up your password. New passwords are a minimum of six digits, maximum of 16, depending on how paranoid you are. Um, a couple little rules to be aware of, but don't worry about memorizing these because she'll tell you if she, you put something in that she doesn't like. It cannot be all the same digit, and it cannot be a continuous sequence, either ascending or descending. One, 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 one will not work. One, 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 two would. 1, would not work. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 would. Once you put that in, you'll press pound, and you'll put it in a second time and press pound to confirm it. At that point, you have a fully functioning voicemail box, except you do not have a personalized greeting. It, will, it still plays voicemail Sally, saying something like, the Intuidiotics user you have reached is currently not available. Please leave a message. That's fine. If you don't want to change it, and your boss is cool with it, no big deal. Um, you can hang up and you're good to go. At this point, since you've just set up your password and you think you're the type of person who's not going to remember your password when you come back from vacation, do yourself a favor. Write it down, put it in an envelope, and then put it in a place on your desk that you will remember. When you come back from vacation and try to log in, after two unsuccessful attempts, hang up. Dig out that envelope, open it, and log in. If you do, if you log in unsuccessfully three times, you've locked yourself out. You will have to call the help desk to get it reset. Logging into voicemail is always the same. It is always extension pound, password pound, no matter where you are. If you're in here and you want to check your voicemail, extension pound, password pound, you're at your desk, extension pound, password pound. On the beach in Hawaii, you've got to check your voicemail for some strange reason. Extension pound, password pound. You, there is no difference from sitting at your desk, sitting at somebody else's desk, or being on your cell. When you're in remotely, you have just as much control in your mailbox as you do if you were sitting at your desk. 
All right, on the handout, we're going to switch to the next page, where it says one, two, three across the top. Um, once you've logged in, extension pound password pound, you're at the main menu. She always reads one, two, and three to you. She also tells you that to get to help is star four. It's a very good, or star page, a very good help system, but it only explains or helps you where you're at. If you're trying to find something else, it's not that helpful. If you're lost, hang out and start over. It's the easiest way. There is a four, five, six, and seven. They are silent options. There is not a four written on this handout because it's your outbox and never ever going to use it. Option number one, create messages. This is how you leave a voicemail message for someone without calling them. In general, the only time you're going to be doing this, if you ever do it, is you're going to send the same voicemail message to a group of people. We didn't really use email for this these days instead of voicemail, but you could do this. Uh, you want to send a reminder to your team. Um, you know, there's a training next week at 2 o'clock. So instead of sending that or you know calling everybody on your team, all 10 people, you log into voicemail, record that once, and address it to all 10 people. If you do that a lot, you can build distribution lists so you just assign it to or, or, um, excuse me, assign it to the uh, list instead of to all the different extensions. About two thirds of the way down that column, you'll see step three: um, delivery options. These options always apply whether you tell the caller or not. Every message I leave for you, I can mark priority because I know all I have to do is hit two, even if you don't have that instructions in your group. Option one, uh, priority. I'm sorry, private. A uh, private message cannot be forwarded to anyone. It can only reply to the sender if the sender was internal. Priority messages, you hear priority messages before you hear non-priority. Scheduled delivery, so you deliver a message at some point in the future. So if we do have a training class, like let's say next week at Thursday um, at 2 o'clock, I can send out a reminder right now, and then I can schedule another reminder to be delivered Thursday morning. I don't have to wait until next Thursday to send it out. 